What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jimmy James 59. And today, I want to touch on a subject that I haven't heard much about recently, but definitely has been a discussion in the game for a while. And that's the Chinese win rate among the various ELO levels. And in particular, I want to focus on a change that I observed recently, taking a look at some statistics about the game. Now, for most of the history of Age of Empires 2, the Chinese as a civilization have had a reputation for being very difficult to play at low and mid elo levels and has basically been considered a sieve that only shines at high elo levels and the reasoning is simple the chinese have one of the most difficult starts in the game you start off with more villagers but less of other resources and what that means is that unless you're a high elo player you just get off to such a rough start that it would be difficult to recover from it opponents would get far enough ahead of you that even having that robust economy and rather versatile military technology tree wouldn't be enough to bring you back in the game. And as a result, Chinese win rates at the non-high level were pretty terrible. But as we look out today, it seems that times have changed. When we look at plus 1200 ELO players, the Chinese today are a top 10 civilization on Arabia. And this is something that's held true now. For the previous two patches as well, Chinese seem to have been improving. So what's going on? Well, that's the topic of today's video. Now, before I actually dive into things, I will take a moment to encourage you to like and subscribe to the channel. I've actually gone out of my way to not say this sort of thing, in part because my ability to regularly put up content on a, you know, a weekly basis has uh, not been that great. This is really just a hobby for me, and my work-life balance is a little bit out of whack. Now, I was thinking about this, though, and what I am trying to do is that when I do put a video out, be more deliberate about it and really make sure that it's content that I think people are going to find interesting on the whole. And it's also the case that because I'm probably not as regular as I'd like to be about this, that actually subscribing and hitting that notification bell so that when I do put up a video, you get notified. I think that's something that'll help you out a lot if you enjoy the kind of content that I put out. Now, hopefully I'll be a little bit more regular someday and maybe that day will come soon. At least I hope it comes sooner rather than later. At the end of the day, though, I do like spreading knowledge about the game. Age of Empires 2 is, a, is a, I think, a really fun part of my life and something I've enjoyed with a lot of friends and even enjoyed uh, going all the way back when I was a little fella playing this game uh, for the first time way, way back when it initially came out. So I enjoy being part of this community and I like to keep it that way. Anyways, on to the video. Now, the first thing I want to do is set the stage here and kind of identify what's going on and this phenomenon of an improved chinese win rate is one that really seems to be taking place mostly at the mid elo level of the game we can see from the statistics that players that are between 1000 and 1200 elo still really struggle to play chinese the win rate's not good here and this makes a lot of sense at that 1000 to 1200 elo range this is a tough zone you have a lot of players in here that are getting deliberate about build orders, uh, still might have some mechanical difficulties, maybe even lack a few academic concepts, but are really starting to get that try-hard mode in. You have some new players still floating around, and that can create a little bit of confusion. Um, this is a tough ELO to predict, and I made a video about that, actually, what it means to be mid-ELO. I'll link that after this one. But basically, right, you have players that are really starting to experiment with build orders at this stage, and because the Chinese have such an odd start, I think this probably really throws people off. Now, as shown from the rankings that I posted earlier in this video, the Chinese win rate has really shot up over the last few patches. It hit 50% actually, and has stayed above there for the last two patches and, current, and currently the one that we're in. This is a major change. Now, I also don't think this is kind of just some flash in the pan or it's completely random. If we also look at their play rate, this has also increased commensurately with their win rate. So it does seem obvious to me, right, that something's going on. The player base is adjusting them on the ladder on Arabia to play them a lot more. So because they're seeing more action, I gotta think that there's some kind of reason behind all of this, even though maybe there's a chicken and egg thing going on in terms of play rate and win rate. Which one comes first? I don't know. But I think the point is that there's probably something happening. What I wanna do here is think about what could be some of the reasons. Now, to try and understand maybe some balance changes behind the sieve, 
and see if that resolves some things. We want to go ahead and look back at what have been some of the balance changes specific to the Chinese. Well, since August of 2021, there have really been two civilization-specific changes. The first is that your reduced technology cost actually was nerfed, so your the amount of reduction that you were getting is not as high as it was. So, um, you know, this is a this was a big change to the Civ, and definitely something that shouldn't be improving their win rate. The other change was that town centers now provide more population space and increased line of sight. And the real question is that, can these changes account for the increase in the win rate? Now, I think there's an argument you could actually make here in terms of yes, but, right, there's also a counter-argument. And you're going to hear me do this argument, counter-argument thing a number of times in the video. Now, the argument for, right, the balance changes overall, increasing the win rate, I think comes down to the town center change. I don't think this has received a ton of attention, but this in my mind, makes a pretty massive difference for the Chinese. And I actually think we can compare this sort of uh, change to the start and the effect that that might have on win rates to a current civilization that's going through that in the Georgians. The Georgians were basically the worst civilization on the ladder of Pachigo. And their start was more difficult because they started with only 50 less food but had a mule cart for free. When that was changed, and they now start with the regular amount of food, the Georgians' win rate has shot up, and they're basically, right now when I look, they're the number two sieve on Arabia on the ladder. That's crazy. The fact that Chinese, right, that they can delay making a house now, right, until their 12th villager, I think kind of gives them a similar feel in some ways to the Georgians, in that, you know, you really don't have to start thinking about putting down buildings until much, much later. That means that you can get on food faster, and for the Chinese, that's important because it can kind of help you get caught up in food within their civilization. Oh, and now you have extra villagers working too because you start off with them. So because we can see just how much of an impact a small change in the start can have for the Georgians, it just wouldn't surprise me to see a similar dynamic occur with the Chinese. Now, I think the alternative argument here is that if the Chinese start was an issue, we'd probably expect them to have a stronger early game, or at least a maybe a more comparable early game with the sort of rest of the moments of the civilization. And that's not something that happens. And this is actually in contrast to the Georgians, who do really well in games lasting under 20 minutes. The Chinese, on the other hand, are still, well, pretty bad in the early stages of the game with a sub 41% win rate in games lasting under 20 minutes and only 45% in games lasting 20 to 30 minutes. So if the town center change was really moving the needle here, you'd think we would see the win rate to not be such a steep climb where the civilization really shines in the later stages of the game. You'd think we'd see them perform better early on. Now, what I want to talk about are some general balance changes we've seen or maybe just some general changes to the game that are not specific to the Chinese. Because some of these aren't balance changes per se, right? Very recently, we've had a drop-off food command added, and that helps out the Chinese because now it's so much easier to force drop-off food to uh, minimize that TC idle time, and it's so smooth to do that now. But I don't think that accounts for what we're seeing here because the improvement in the Chinese win rate really starts two patches ago. And that's update 99931. And I think, my friends, that's the place where we need to start to think about what may have happened. So go in and take a look at some of those patch notes. There's a few notable things here that I think help explain why the Chinese are in such a better position in terms of win rate at the medieval level. The first change is the consistency of deer migration was, uh, was added here. Where what was happening was that when you're pushing deer to the town center, Previously, deer could be a bit indecisive. Sometimes they'd loiter around for a while, just kind of waiting you to, on you to push them into the town center and lead them to their death. And other times, they would pretty quickly decide that they didn't want to be eaten and then migrate back to their sort of territory on the map. And this change making the deer a bit more consistent in terms of when they'll return back to their territory has made deer pushing a lot easier, to be honest. 
The real threat from deer was the fact that you would waste time pushing them with a scout, and then they would just run away on you. So for this reason, I think that we've seen uh, this change majorly affect the Chinese, in part because deer pushing has become really an indispensable part of the meta for all players at 1200 ELO, regardless of the Civ. We used to have debates whether it was more important to push deer, scout your opponent, and frankly, it's just not a zero-sum game anymore as I think the mid-elo player base has just gotten better at pushing deer and then going out and finding their opponent. Now for the Chinese in particular though, pushing deer is really important because you start off with a lot less food. And that, as I mentioned earlier, helps you catch up in food production, which is really one of the things that the Chinese are trying to do. I also think that this is especially true in a meta that has de-emphasized minute arms. In most games now, because we are in something of a scout or archer meta on Arabia, you don't have to worry about enemy units approaching your base in the Dark Age. In most games, when your opponent has Feudal Age, then they're going to start making the military to attack. And even if you do have, say, Militia showing up, it's pretty easy to fight them off with villagers, small wall your resources, and just deal with them that way if you fail to scout it. So, in conclusion, right? Deer pushing and the changes there. Is that something that accounts for the increase in the win rate? Well, once again, I think there's kind of two arguments here, and there's some possibility that this could be something that helps explain why Chinese seem to be better now. Now, my reasoning against this being the reason is that if we look at 1900 plus ELO games, we observe a similar trend with the Chinese. During the last three patches, Chinese are doing pretty well uh, among higher ELO players, and while they were never really bad on the ladder, like they were at mid ELO, I do think that we have seen a similar trend here at the 1900 level of some marginal improvements. And I think that players at this level have been adept at pushing deer for quite some time. And I would just expect them to be less affected by such a change. On the other hand, I do think that when you combine the deer pushing change with the increased town center line of sight, I have to imagine that Chinese players are finding their extra sheep faster and then are able to go push deer to the town center earlier. And so maybe they're just able to more reliably push in more deer or even all of their deer. So that could be something that helps too. Continuing to look at the patch notes, there were some notable fixes regarding some pathing that might be helpful, but I think there's an even more impactful change that we could look at. And that's, this was the patch that really revolutionized monks. Monk conversions were normalized here, which is something that I predicted would happen in a previous video. And we also had the devotion technology introduced. So why does that matter? Well, monks were countering knights pretty hard with, you know, some really quick conversions being exceptionally frustrating, making it really difficult to be more aggressive with your knights. But with conversions being more predictable, it's a lot easier for your knights to conduct a strategic retreat. The mobility of a knight is really critical, and because they have a lot of durability and do a lot of damage as well, if you gift one away to an enemy, it really hurts. Now, this change I think meant a lot for mid-elo play because it's something that, I don't know if it's commonly known, but I think it's generally assumed at least, that cavalry play is incredibly popular at mid-elo levels. And I would say knights, even camels by extension, since they're a mobile counter to knights, really rule the mid and maybe even high to mid elo level. So now this new technology of devotion and better predictability is going to help your cavalry play. This patch also reduced the upgrade time of the cavalier, which is something that helps you with that early imperial age power spike. And with Chinese, right, researching cavalier and its associated upgrades, you get that at a discount. And if we look in sort of justification of this, if we take a look at the top 10 win rate civs on Arabia, 9 out of 10 of them have pretty solid cavalry or camels, at least for 1v1 games. Only the Vikings waste in as a civ that's kind of a bad cavalry civ and it's still in the top 10. Now the Chinese are a civ that has fully upgraded cavaliers and fully upgraded heavy camel riders. And so I think that this change, right, making the knight camel play a bit more consistent here is actually really important. It's also the case that the crossbow upgrade is more expensive, and remember, the Chinese don't have the same cost reduction as they used to. So for all of these reasons, I can see a lot of 1200 plus ELO players 
playing Chinese more as a cavalry sit. And if that's the case, then these monk changes are going to have a lot more of an impact than we previously saw. Now, there's another reason here that I want to talk about that interacts with this change with monks, because I do think we're seeing a pattern emerge in terms of some changes that are made in the game, actually within the game itself. But let me also consider changes that go beyond the game. And that's the simple fact the player base of today is far more educated and has more prowess at the game than many years ago. And there's a few reasons for this. There are a ton of guides and videos out there to mastering the Chinese start. They're very publicly available. Pro players like Hera have put them out there. Survivalist, who puts out a lot of great content, has some great guides. Uh, maybe even, you know, yours truly has, you know, put out a, a video kind of showcasing this. I don't think I was actually playing in that game, but I was showing a build from Chinese from somebody else that I thought was really good. I also think it's the case that the power creep in the game, buffing other civilizations, has caused Chinese to be picked a little bit more in high-level play. This is just an intuition of mine. I didn't really have the data to look at this, but I feel like I see Chinese a bit more in tournaments now because maybe they're not auto-banned, though they're still banned quite a lot in most cases, but we just see them a bit more at higher levels. And I think we see how uh, pro players optimize them. Another reason here for just thinking about the player base being better is that the medieval players now have you know, over a year's worth of games under our belts too. And if everybody's improving at the same rate, well, you're not going to see an ELO improvement because, well, if we're improving at the same rate, we should stay at the same ELO, even though we're getting better at the game. So I mean, that's what I tell myself to make me feel better going to sleep at night, is my ELO changes very little. And I like to think that I'm better now than I was a year ago. Now, of course, there is a counter argument to this whole, you know, the player base just being better uh, you know, logic. And that's the fact that this change is pretty recent. Uh, the player base has been getting slowly better for quite some time now. But why the sudden change? Well, I think that the reason for that is that when you overlay that onto the changes that we've discussed, both to the Civ and also in terms of maybe some of the, the balance or fixes in the game, the mid-elo players of today have really strong academic knowledge, know a lot of concepts, we're good at the game, but we still often struggle with execution. And the change to the Chinese start, plus the deer pushing, plus the monk conversion, what I think that that has done is it's aided in areas where I think mid-elo players didn't struggle in terms of execution. It's now easier to execute deer pushing. It's now easier to execute the Chinese start because you can wait to build a house. And now it's a lot more easier, right, to say, avoid monks, keep your army alive, and hey, maybe even get some conversion resistance as well. I think when you add in all of those, I think that when, it, when you get a player base that just knows a lot more, and then you make it easier for them to execute, it just doesn't surprise me that I think that we see kind of a perfect storm for the Chinese to really start to thrive in mid-Evo. And so that's my take, right? Why I think we've seen such a drastic change here as of late. A perfect storm theory, so to speak, it might seem like a little bit of a cop-out, but I think given the lack of major overhaul kind of balance changes to the, uh, to the Chinese themselves, um, I just think this explanation is the one that really makes the most sense. I also think that when we see what we have with the Chinese, it just speaks to how good players have gotten. The fact that Chinese are considered a very strong mid elo civ is something that as I've been playing the game for about, you know, I would say consistently for really about, you know, three years now, um, it's kind of hard for me to imagine. And I'm just so impressed that the player base has really improved and it makes games more competitive. I really enjoy it. Uh, even if, you know, uh, you know, losing on the ladder is never fun. Uh, this is something that, at the end of the day, right, we like having these competitive games. And I will say additionally to that, that given the sharp contrast we see um, at the 1200 and above level, from the level that's, say, 1000 to 1200, it really has kind of convinced me that we probably should start considering 1200 ELO as something of an official threshold of where we consider the crossover occurs in intermediate play. But maybe that's the subject for another video. With all that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm Jimmy James 59 and I'll see you out there in the ladder. Peace.